Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, today I want to talk with you about why I will always stick, always stick to African cichlids as one of the primary fish that I keep. The primary reason, the main reason why I'll always do that is color. Let's get into it right now. If you're new to the channel, I thank you for stopping by. And if you like the content of this channel, please be sure to hit that, that uh, bell and that uh, notification bell and the, the subscription uh, button. And that, uh, and that tells YouTube that there's something go good going on here. And it, it encourages YouTube to promote the channel, put it in front of other fish keepers. So I thank you for doing that. And it'll help, help the channel get over that 40,000 number that I've been shooting for. So um, let's get into the topic here on color. And I, I really think that African cichlids, when you consider both variety of shape and color, I think they really are the, uh, probably the top, the top of freshwater fish. I'm sure all of you have your, your own opinions. Some of you are big on guppies and betta and discus. And I certainly like all of those, um, apistos and, and uh, South American cichlids. New World cichlids, right? They, they're, they're all really beautiful in their own way. But when it comes to just plain uh, pop, really the color of, uh, and the pop, really African cichlids are hard to beat. One of the theories is that African cichlids evolved from saltwater fish, a, salt, a, a section of saltwater that was split up from the ocean many, many millennia ago and became the Rift Lakes of Africa. There are a lot of beautiful fish out there in my mind, this is just one man's opinion, African cichlids, because of the color variety and shape variety, if you look at the gar that's in here, if you look at an eye biter, uh, you look at a bucanona that's cruising right here, the Energizer bunny that's always moving. Uh, he looks like E.T. So there's, there's so much variety that I really think they are the king of color. But... There are folks out there who have African cichlids that actually don't look quite that colorful and uh, in some cases can look a little bit dull. Not because they're females, since it's the males of most African cichlids, right, that have the color, but because of other factors. And I want to share with you the five tips, my five tips for having the most colorful fish possible. Now, my, my, my tip number one is to give these fish fresh water. They need fresh water. They need to have the, uh, the room aired out every now and then. Uh, imagine being locked up in a, in a closet with 10 different people and, uh, you know, they're sweating and they're, and they're uh, releasing gas and uh, <laughs> urinating and defecating. After a while, you're going to want to get out of that closet. Well, these tanks, uh, they need to be aired out. They need to have uh, minerals added to them and uh, freshened up. And one way to do that, of course, is with water changes. So uh, water change, fresh water. This is key for, for good color. The color, of course, is an indication that you have a happy fish. And a happy fish, I believe, needs good quality, good quality water, good water quality. The other point is quality food. Uh, there are a lot of foods out there that have fillers and things that have no value to the fish and uh, it actually the fish uses energy to move this this stuff through their body but but doesn't really extract any nutrients from it this is why i always stress uh, sure you can cut corners in a few areas buy a less expensive filter uh, perhaps use uh, use play sand for your substrate but but don't cut corners with food Get the best food you can, and you'll be rewarded by better, better health and better color. The other thing which sort of ties into water changes, of course, is regular scheduled maintenance. And this goes back to that old saying in fish keeping, you've got to do the work. And um, this maintenance uh, can, in can include vacuuming, uh, you know, wiping down the, the, 
the panels, right, the, the front viewing panels, the side panels, cleaning up the algae that uh, might have built up, not just on the front, but on the top that might be blocking some of the light from coming through, right? So keeping the top, the sides nice and clean, uh, all that, all that will impact. Now, point number four is kind of an obvious one, but maybe not, uh, good quality lights. I personally prefer a full spectrum LED. Full spectrum LEDs, for me, I feel just bring out the greatest amount of color, the most pop in the fish. Full spectrum because uh, sun, in my, in my mind, sun is, brings out the best colors, uh, but we don't uh, really have aquariums that really are lit by the sun that frequently. And when we do, they usually get overtaken by algae. But a full spectrum LED, I feel, is the best way to go and, um, and make sure that it is strong enough to really light the entire, the entire tank. The next point, of course, is adequate filtration. And it's a bit distracting when you're looking at fish to have a lot of particles floating around. And uh, that can be just, a, that can be the result of poor filtration. I like to turn uh, my aquariums over five to 10 times an hour. So a 100 gallon aquarium, there should be 500 to 1,000 gallons an hour turning over. And uh, just as an example, and that means that that water is traveling through filter media and uh, not the bio biological, because the biological doesn't really do anything uh, when it comes to removing of particles. I'm talking about mechanical, your uh, floss, your sponges, things of that nature. And so adequate filtration. And that means that, for example, in this tank, I have a sump uh, with a um, uh, she say, as you can see here on my shirt, <laughs> She say pump that is pumping 2,500 gallons an hour. Of course, it loses a little bit of that in head pressure. Uh, so let's just say, let's say 2,000, and also a uh, an FX6 Fluval FX6, which is rated at uh, over 500 gallons an hour. So between the two of those, I have a a lot of water turnover in this 210 gallon. So the water is being filtered through media and having a lot of the particles pulled out of it. There is a pre-filter on the fluval, and there's a sort of pre-filter in the sump as well in the form of the socks, filter socks, which work as a sort of pre-filter. So definitely adequate, adequate filtration. Now, I'm gonna give you some bonus tips. And uh, a couple of these um, I'm, I'm sure you'll relate to, and one of them is you really have to start with quality stock. And by that, what I mean is Get your hands on um, on good quality fish that uh, you know come from good breeders, from good fish suppliers. The fish you see behind me here are from the Cichlid Shack in Tempe, Arizona, and uh, he deals in really good quality fish, hardy fish. They don't come in saying that they're one thing, and in fact they're some t some type of hybrid. That's not the case. These fish are what they're supposed to be. There are a couple hybrids in there uh, intentionally, right? The, uh, the Phoenix is a hybrid. And of course the OB, the Skittles OB is what you would call also a hybrid. So if you start with good quality fish, you'll end up with good, you know, good colors. Another one is uh, another point, another bonus I'll give you is uh, have the fish in the proper water parameters. And that, that is a lot more than just temperature. Uh, it also includes the right pH, uh, the right hardness, right? Water hardness, and uh, your GH and KH, things that you need to uh, keep in mind. And uh, so have the right water parameters for your fish and they will demonstrate better color. Also have the right tank mates. If you have tank mates that uh, are going to be stressing out the other fish, those fish are going to color down that's how they uh, try and seem like they're not a threat by actually coloring down. You don't want your fish colored down. You don't want your fish trying to be invisible. You want your fish really colorful and popping. So have fish in, you know, mixed together that get along relatively well. I know that's a little bit hard to do with African cichlids. There's always going to be a chase 
and I'm sure during this video you probably saw a few chases. But uh, for the most part, if you don't have fish singling out other fish for, for uh, destruction, you're going to end up with more colorful fish. Now in this tank behind me, I have several fish that uh, I, I'm really, really liking uh, the way they're looking. And uh, one of them is what is commonly referred to as a big spot hap. I just love the way this big spot hap looks. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's an autopharynx mopombo, also it's referred to as autopharynx heterodon tanzania. It can get up to six inches, the big spot hap. Love the way that fish looks. I also love the way the insignis looks. You know, you get this, um, this uh, fish that goes from a beautiful blue and then it sort of transitions into an orangey yellow. A, uh, just, uh, again, just a beautiful fish and uh, gets up to about 10 inches. So that, that fish is going to be rather spectacular uh, as he gets older. Of course, those of you who follow my channel, you know that I, I love the look of the Autopharynx tetrastigma. That is one of my favorite fish and uh, continues to be just an absolutely gorgeous fish. And uh, the colors on the body, the sort of translucence, blue, reds, greens, uh, the blue in the face, absolutely gorgeous. Love that fish. So um, currently I would say that, that those fish, I mean, the Phoenix, right? The, bu bu the Bucanono, where is he? Bucanono. Uh, I mean, they're all beautiful, but uh, those, those right now, this week, are my favorites, and uh, that probably will change over time. I mean, the Bicolor 500, what can you say about the Bicolor 500? He's gorgeous, right? And uh, also that uh, Protomelis, that Labradin, Protomelis Labradin, if I see him back here, I don't see him back here right now. Oh, here he is. Beautiful fish with an orange tail, uh, a bit rare. Protomelis labradin. Get up to seven inches. Absolutely gorgeous fish. So anyway, I'm in love with the color of these fish. I love the way they're popping. And your fish should be popping too. Just follow those, those tips. Give them good clean water. Give them good food. Uh, regular maintenance. Proper lighting. Keep those top Keep the tops of your aquariums clean so the light can get through. Uh, be sure you're providing adequate filtration. Uh, start with quality stock, good quality fish, and uh, be sure you have the right tank mates and the right tank parameters. And you too will have fish that are popping and uh, looking great, okay? So I hope that helps. Any questions or ideas that you have about this subject, please share them below. I'd uh, always love to hear from you. and. Um, that's all I have for you for now. I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. We'll talk about fish and fish color and how decor can impact that because uh, one point I didn't bring up is uh, substrate and substrate can actually have an impact on the color of fish. That's why I picked a neutral, a sort of gray substrate here, a black and white, which is a combination of substrates that I mix together and uh, to really kind of bring up the best of all the fish. All white substrate kind of washes them out. All black makes them a little bit too dark. And I think together with the black background, the Velamax, right, vinyl background, I think I've got the best, best pop I can get. All right, so see you on Saturday. That's it for me. Thank you, my friends. Bye-bye.